Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. All right, and welcome back to another episode of Business Innovators Radio. I am your host, Marco Salinas, and today I've got a very special guest joining us. His name is Mr. Carlos Rosario. And Carlos is someone that I have actually known for some time now. Um, and he is kind of in the similar space that I am. We're all kind of nerds of uh, marketing and sales and all this kind of fun stuff when it comes to helping businesses grow. And so anytime that I get to have someone on my podcast that's, um, you know, into the same stuff that likes to geek out on um, business growth strategies and marketing and sales strategies, Man, I, it's always a very exciting day for me. So um, just real quick, before I officially give you that intro, Carlos, let me just mention just a quick you know, little bit about you here. Carlos has been in the marketing and sales game on his own for about 12 or 13 years now. He got started around 2010, 2011. Prior to that, he was uh, in the finance department at, you know, I guess I could say in the auto world, in the auto industry. Yep. Uh, I'll let him kind of touch a little bit more on that. But now Carlos is doing a mixture of things, all kind of revolving around sales, marketing, um, copywriting, and just general ingestion of amazing business content. Um, because as we were mentioning before we started recording here, um, I have received a tremendous amount of of uh, just golden nuggets and information from Carlos over the last you know ten years or so that we've been connected online together here on Facebook, um, Carlos is always, always dripping out amazing information that he finds because he's obviously consuming a lot of information on his side. But I love the way he takes sometimes complex things and then he spins it um, in a way where we can all understand. And it's not so so difficult for us to, to, you know, to digest. So anyways, enough rambling on my part. Carlos, welcome to the podcast, my brother. Thank you so much for having me, man. That was, that was awesome intro, man. You got to better. That be with goosebumps, man. I'm gonna have to record that and write some of that down. I Thank think you. well, I think what I'll do is I'll make a little video soundbite of that so you can so you can put that out. Anyways, oh, nice. anyways, yeah. yeah. So uh, everything I said was true, man. There, there's no, there's no bull crap there. Um, I, I mean, I, I am honestly like speaking from personal experience. Um, I've been connected with you for a while. You've been sharing all kinds of amazing things and. Um, I've been able to to get my hands on some incredible content that I was able to turn around and in turn, you know, dive into it myself and then pull out all kinds of great information from that myself. And I'm thinking I, I probably wouldn't even have come across this had I not been connected with Carlos. So, I mean, really, truly and honestly, you've added a ton of uh, value um, in my life, man. And so I just wanted to kind of get you on here. So we could pick your brain a little bit. I want to know, know and learn a little bit more about your background and kind of what you're working on today. Does that sound good, Carlos? Uh, absolutely. Right on, man. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. I'm done. And I'm so glad and honored that, you know, some of the, some of the stuff that I share is useful to somebody. Man, so <laughs> absolutely. Not. Absolutely, man. So let me ask you this. Um, I mentioned just a, a moment ago that you came from the auto world. Um, and now you are doing a lot of things in the sales and marketing and pre-sales world. But tell me just a little bit about maybe a little snippet about your time um, prior to becoming a business owner, or an entrepreneur, how that went down. And then talk to me a little bit about that transition into doing what you do now. Yeah, man, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't necessarily feel like I was an entrepreneur. I'm definitely a, a freelance business owner, but I'm changing that to, to strategist. There's a lot of... Uh, changes that have gone and just kind of like I told you before you started recording, you know, uh, I came from the, from the sales world. I, I went to college. I went to college in Hawaii. Uh, the first place I could think of was still being in the U S you know, trying to grow up and do all these things. I, you know, even though I went to college, I don't think it's, it's, a, nece it's a necessity right now. Sure. In this day and age, sure. Unless you're going to be like a brain surgeon or something or something like that. Um, and we live in some crazy times though. We just tell you, but my journey to, you know, to, to exit and you know, trying to get out of the, 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 the quote unquote rat race world was, uh, happened, um, you know, after I left college, uh, moved to the, to the Bay area, uh, I got into the car world because I didn't know what else to do with, you know, with, with that time. Oddly, ironically, I, I graduated with a, a degree in uh, entrepreneurial studies, whatever the hell that was. Right. Yeah. Um, that sounds, uh, that sounds I sharp, man. I like that. I never heard of that. 
you, you, I mean, I didn't know that was available at, at the college. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. I, I, I didn't either. It sounded cool too, you know. <laughs> um, but when I, I had a buddy who was actually, um, uh, he, he was from the Bay Area, so he was like, you know, I can get your job in, in, in the, like, uh, in uh, like. What's the name of it? It's a it's a, rent, a car rental company. It's one of those. I, I think it was uh okay. Uh, well, anyway, I know what uh, you're short. Right? Yep. Um, he was like, yeah, you know, you know, train for the states so if you want. You, you know, like that, you know, once I get on board, I can get you in. And I was like, cool. I was like, how much do they pay? He's like, probably thought about fifty grand a year. I was like, wow, that sounds like that's awesome, you know. Uh, and I was like, what should I do in the meanwhile? Because I was I had a baby on the way, and uh, just rushed into 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 moving to a new city. And uh, I got I, I uh, worked for a car dealership with a shop. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. Yeah. Weird. Yep. Uh, and you know, long story short, after my first year, I made more than I was going to make working with this guy. And I was just waiting, waiting around to see. You know, I mean, next to a hundred grand a year. Yep. And I was like, wow, you know, where'd it go? First off, <laughs> number two, I, I think you know, I have to do this for a while. Uh, and the car world taught me a lot. It just taught me a lot. You know, the process itself wasn't um, very difficult. It was just being nice, knowing a little bit about the cars and just a little bit, right? And just and just simply giving good customer service and helping people make decision, the decisions. And thankfully, a uh, few somebody that I worked for saw you know a potential in me, and he he uh, elevated me to the finance department and uh, at a, at a different dealership. And I stood there for like seven, eight years, something like that. Um, and I learned a whole bunch there until uh, the, you know, the, the Great Recession kicked in and it threw, threw me out. Along, there was a tumultuous time there, right, for, for a short period of time. Um, when that happened, I lost my job. Then I then I lost condo. Then I lost family members that meant a lot. You know, I went through a kind of the precious period. Yeah. Um, but, you know, but I, but I was determined not to kind of like get back into the, into that, into that, I go into the working world again. Sure. And so I started a business, uh, started working online, started trying stuff, you know, failing miserably, trying stuff left and right, just willy nilly, like n- no idea what the hell I was going to do. Sure. Um, had a, had a, you know, went on the discovery for myself type journey. Uh, I was like, I'm going to, you know, I, I need to get my head screwed on back straight. So I moved back to the East Coast where I had a network that was close to me and so forth. Um, and then uh, from there, I you know try, I, I tried various things. I did the SEO thing. Uh, then I discovered copywriting. Um, I did some stuff with e-commerce as well. But then I, I then I discovered copywriting. And from that, uh, I, I was like, you know, all the everything I learned in sales translate to this nicely. I didn't realize how powerful it was. Um, and from that point, uh, I started writing copy for folks. I I had some pretty cool cafe clients. Uh, started the group and then just kept writing, just, just reading and writing every day, man. But yeah, and at, now it's just it's just a for me it's 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 about the life journey of just enjoying it, like trying to trying not to um uh get back into like the hectic environment that most people are familiar with. You sure, know? trying to enjoy life now, man. If that makes any sense, but, absolutely. But, you know, at some point it's gonna end. So I just I just Put one foot in front of the other. Every yeah, day I no question, man. No, I absolutely love that. Um, and so, what what kind of reaction did you get from family members and friends once you decided that you were going to go it on your own? Because I think a lot of people, you know, are, are very, uh, especially people who care about us, they have good intentions, right? They're worried about you know stability, financial. What you're not going to have a paycheck, a steady paycheck, you know, and it does take a lot of courage, right? I mean, what we do. You call it what you want, entrepreneurship, freelancing. The point is, for the most part, you're going it on your own, right? And you're you're yeah. earning your own paycheck, and it's not a guarantee. And so it's not for everyone. It does it does take some some real strength. So what kind of a response did you get from family members, friends, when you decided you weren't going to go ahead and go back to the, let's call it the nine to five? I'll tell you a quick story. One of the first, one of my first real wins. Um, I found a dog trainer at a, at a barbecue, at a friend's barbecue. You know, I was trying to network, help them talk to everybody. Right. And the long and short of this was 
I knew I could help the guy, but when we got to talking, you know, you know, you know as soon as you start leg humping, right, with people, like, you know, at first he was like, yeah, and he's trying to be nice and polite, and, you know, I was like, no, I can help this dude. So, so I, I like, did some stuff, got him found, like, findable, and I, and I, and I got, I, what I did was I, I got, at that time, Google Voice numbers yes. were a branding thing. Yep. So I was able to get him one of those, and I, so I was able to track that, you know, he got leads from my efforts. Long story short, I was able to prove that. I hit the guy up. And I was like, hey, you know, because I had his contact details. I was like, hey, did, did, you know, did this guy land? Did this guy land? Did this guy land? You know, I, I, I mentioned a few different customers that I knew went through. Sure. I heard them. Sure. Uh, and he was like, those are from you? I was like, yeah. And he was like, well, immediately the guy was just like, oh my God. He was like, so, all right, we, we got to work together. How's this, how's this going to work? And I said, um, I don't, I had no idea what the charge was. I had no clue. I was, clueless. I was like, I don't know, like 150 bucks a month. Right, and he was like, he busted on the check. He, he wrote it right there, right. And he slid it all down, boom. And I was like, yeah, like I was so elated, and I was so happy. Right, ran, and it was. This was like the first, you know, the first time getting something with this thing I was trying. Sure. Right? And I remember calling my pops up. Uh, my dad, my dad died in 2013, unfortunately. But I remember calling him up. And I was like, hey, pops, I got you know, I got my first deal doing this new thing. And he was like, oh, no, shame out, yo, what, how much? How much is that? You, know, you get like you're getting excited too, and I was like, 150 bucks a month. He's like, dead silence. I'm like, I look. He's like, 150 bucks a month. How? What kind of bills are you gonna pay with that? <laughs> Total buzz kill, right? I was oh, like, damn, man. <laughs> like, Thanks a lot. <laughs> he was open. He was quarter, open. Man. He was open for 1500. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, you know, I, I get it. But but <laughs> that's that kind of like sets the state sets the stage for. You know, the bottom line is no matter, no matter what happens, you're not going to please everybody and everybody has your best interest in art. So whatever successes you get, I think it's important that you, in, in my opinion, of course, uh, that you adopt the, the, every little win is a blessing, right? Count it. Yes. You know, and as you move through this world, I mean, you can see it on social media. You'll see it. it it's, it's, this is something that doesn't change, right? People always have opinions about what you should or shouldn't do with your life. And if you ask 10 different people in your life that are close to you, every one of them has a different opinion right. about what you should do. Sure. And if you try to do that, you know, anything by committee, right? Like, try to please everybody, you're not going to please anybody. Right. So if you're going to try to start pleasing anybody, in my opinion, start with yourself. Great you idea. Know? Um Yep. What, whatever that means to you. And, and then along the way, you're going to have to build resilience into that because... It's it's hard to have a position or conviction, especially when you're down, man. You know, especially when you're feeling like it's not, you know. So I had a, you know, I, I had to adopt some. I'm not super uh, religious. I grew up Catholic, but I'm not super religious. I am spiritual, though. I do believe in a higher being and all this. But you know, I was looking for, you know, because I didn't want to read one thing. So I got really heavy into uh, um, stoicism. Okay, you know, I sure. Got into the other philosophy, um, and uh, that helped me get an even keel on, you know, on, on being like objective, um, and just being, you know, realistic with things, you know? Uh, so, so, so I say all that to say, if you feel like you're on the wrong path, if you don't feel what you're doing, that's your intuition speaking, you you know, listen to that, but try to minimize everybody else's chatter. Everybody else has input, but you know what I mean? Unless, unless it's coming from somebody that you value, that you call you know, that their input is valid to you. Sure. Don't, don't give it too much weight. Easier said than done, but that's my, that's my advice on that. No, man. Let me tell you okay, something. I can, I can really resonate with your, with that amazing story because you just said, you know, be careful what you listen to and make sure it's somebody that you, that you respect and that, um, you know, whose feedback is important or not important that you, you know, that actually means something. Well, I would argue that your dad's feedback is obviously very important by nature and by yeah. virtue of who he is. However, one thing about certain family members like our parents is they may not fully understand the context, right? Because it was only 150 bucks in your dad's eyes. But, <laughs> but, yep. but, and this is a big but, this is a really big deal. That was the first money that you had produced completely on your own. Yep. Right? Because most of us, the money that comes in is usually through, through some sort of an employer. And so even though, even yep. if it's a small amount, right, it's kind of like when you get that very first online transaction, I don't care if you're just selling an ebook for $9 and 99 cents, 
you see it and, it, and what does it do? It opens your mind and you say, holy smokes, this is actually possible. Yeah. So it's almost like yep. if I could do this on a small scale, maybe I can do this on a big scale too. Right. You know, uh, a lot of people don't understand the sequence of emotion. That's something off the turkey forever. I, I, I share it with you if you want. Please do. I, I don't, I don't. Yes, please Basically, do. Basically, we're the, okay, so so one of the things that I learned that, again, it was like more like this, I don't know where the hell I got this from because I just consume a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, I think it, I think it was uh, Eric Barker. I'm not sure if he's familiar with him, but he wrote a book called uh, Arcing Up the Wrong Tree. Okay, I hadn't uh, heard that brilliant one, but, book, but guess man. what I'm going to do now? <laughs> yeah, it's a There's brilliant another one. book. You, he said, I mean, he's brilliant, man. The guy, the guy's super brilliant. He goes, the world is on a strata, uh, the, this fourth strata of, the, of, of, of life. You, you can't, you're always going to be one of these four. The bottom, the bo- at the bottom rung, you have givers. They're the, they're the foundation of the world, but they're the ones that give without question. So they're like children and, you know, the innocent and uh, the, the naive. Right? Sure. Yep. And they're usually, they usually like just give without condition. Mother Teresa, right, of the world. Sure. Just above them on on Stata are uh, takers, takers. You know, people you know, give me you just you know that the, all they do is take and take and take take. They never have anything else to give. This lines up, by the way, with another uh, a pyramid, which is the mental hierarchy of needs. I'm getting to it in a second. Got gotcha. you. But basically, above that you have um, you have matchers, matchers police the takers because they're watching to see they're watching with arms crossed to see. How people are treating these poor, innocent, naive givers, right? Yep. But they usually aren't first to give. They usually wait to see how you treat them. You know, most mostly kind of like just uh, they're fair, but they're also like not, you know, they're, they're guarded, right? Yep. Um, and the masters kind of like are sort of where the majority of us are. I, I would say I'm a, I'm a mostly a master too. I would suspect most people are. You can spot the takers too. You know, you know the you know them with you if I. I don't want to offend anybody, but you know, uh, anybody that doesn't take responsibility for themselves is usually a faker. Yep. Anyway, above that though, are you know, like at the top echelon, the, the irony is at the very top of this pyramid are more givers. What? How the hell are givers at the bottom and at the top? Yeah. Because the people at the top givers, the top givers care about humanity, about the tapestry of the world. They care about giving to those that are worthy. So you have to kind of like put conditions on. Right? I see people that are worth your time. People that, but you know, like if you're talking to somebody, it's like qualifying versus disqualifying. That's it. Like it's essentially like you got to you, if you're going to give to somebody, but they're not really going to do anything with it, then you give it, but you don't give them too much time. You just keep it moving, right? So a giver would be like some of these pinnacle type givers that give to humanity that they just focus on. You know, are like the Steve Jobs, Elon Musk type folks, the people that are changing like. The world, I you know see. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and most most of them give, but with with conditions. You have to kind of like climb up the mountain to meet them where they're at. They'll give you. They'll put their hand up. But they're not going to give you too much time if you're not willing to do it yourself. Absolutely. The, the coaches at the top, of, like the Olympic coaches, don't spend time with the people just getting started. That's like, right. You're ready. That's right. The master will you know appear, right? Right. Uh, if that makes sense. A- so yeah, absolutely. Uh, Maslow hierarchy of needs it, it presents, in, in my opinion, the biggest opportunities for everything because of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. What we found out is the bare essentials, right? You're not, you know, we need air, water, right, and food to survive. Bare necessities, and then you need uh, to uh, above that, you need shelter, clothing, right? Um, hopefully, uh, th- that's taken care of, and then above that, you want to be a contributor to a to some sort of group to society we need love friendship right uh most people stop there and entertain yourself on the zone but at the very tippy top of that pyramid there's a there's a crucial part uh it's self-actualization or realization it's called you know we're the only species that we know of that asks the question why that's where intelligence comes from apparently uh, and i was like oh shit like, this is this is when i was reading it I was like, this is brilliant right because why is an inflexible question it forces you to think internally like right uh, this is what makes us human. Uh, besides our emotion, emotions are a little bit more instinctive, but like the, the why question is what makes us a little bit more than the rest of the animals or whatever. Sure. And this question why 
is a fundamental shifting question when you're ready for change, when you're ready for a shift to happen, because you, you, you start to question what is, what, you know, what, what is this reality that makes any sense. Yep. And then past that, we open up opportunity. You said something earlier. We open up the what if, in other words, like the what if happens, what if op- opens possibilities, right? And then if, it, if we're excited enough by it, we'll take action on one of these things that we can justify it logically, right? Yep. And on the roundabout way, I hope that made some sense, man. I made a lot of sense. Some, made uh, a lot okay. of sense. And I, and again, I, I appreciate you, you, you're able to do deep dives on things because you, you're actually out there consuming real content. And so I think your, your brain is kind of a big database of, uh, you know, <laughs> different things, right? Uh, mostly business related, obviously. And so, yeah, no, I, I mean, the, the whole point in, in consuming all that content is to be able to, again, like I mentioned earlier, turn around, explain it in a way where people can understand. And so anytime you do that, Carlos, I'm, I'm super grateful. So thank you for sharing that. Um, matter of fact, one of the things that I wanted to ask you was maybe like something that you're reading right now. Um, that's actually, let's just put it this way. What's the most recent thing that's really stood out to you? Cause I know you're always reading. I know you're always consuming in some capacity, but you know, I just kind of want to know, I could, I could pick you out at any random time. And it's going to be changing because you're always, you know, you're always consuming something different, obviously. Right. And so, um, right. you shared something and now correct me if I'm wrong, what you just shared about Eric Barker that you said barking up the wrong tree. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. You probably yeah. read, a, you probably, about success. Yeah. you probably read that a while back though. Right. How long ago was that? Uh, probably within like a year. I read it two or three times. Okay. Yeah. All right. Give me another one. Give me another golden nugget that really stands out to you. Something that you've consumed recently, uh, book or content wise, um, that you feel like is, is either, you know, has had an impact on you and, and the things that you're doing yeah. or maybe will be because you're getting motivated by it. Yeah. Uh, the book that I recommend to everybody right now, it's a secret weapon book for sure. You'll love it if you get it. And I wish I had kind of like taking it to heart sooner, but the book is called The Business of Expertise. Nice. Tell and me about it. And 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 who's yeah, it written so by? It's just David C. Baker is the guy's name. And um, basically, the dude talks about how important it is for you to position in the world. But in order to position properly, you have to understand the vectors, right? There's vertical positioning and then there's horizontal positioning, right? Um, he gets all into the, he, he just basically gives you shocking perspective shifts in my opinion, really like, oh, so, but in very simple language. Okay. Right. Um, um, and it's, and it's foundationally, it's all about just basically the, 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 the thing he gets quoted mostly about is that a lot of people don't realize this. Yes, you can charge a lot for done for you type stuff, but you should be charging for your knowledge. You should be charging for your brain, not your execution. Okay. Execution should be a matter of convenience. It talks about positioning for your knowledge because we live in a a, a very knowledge based world. Yes. Because now now content is a commodity. Yes. Right? It used to be really hard to i'm sorry it used to be yeah it used to be really hard to produce things before en masse so that's why eat selling was easy because if you accomplish it then you go build it right sure but in this day and age it's really easy to create content uh, to create things yep so selling has gotten a lot harder correct and now with this chat gpt stuff and ai crap you know that's just gotten immensely you know like it's got yeah yeah, yeah I, that's, I, that's I, it, yeah. I just downloaded it man <laughs> yeah i just bought it with it's one just, of my audible credits good 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 man you'll love it yeah tell me what you think uh i i just i suspect you'll love it i don't know i but think, I, I think I you're right you carlos are. i think you're on to something yeah. yeah uh um that's the other thing like we make we make a lot of assumptions in life right and that's gotta that, that that's something that i think not enough people appreciate. We, we don't know. We, we don't know. We don't even, you know, you don't know unless you ask, unless you start asking the question. The best answers in the world come from the best question. Yes. Right? That yes. Perceive it. So, um, he talks about framing yourself or, you know, he gives, he gives a lot of weight to 
how you position is not really based on spouting out how much you know. Like you're asking, and I'm hoping I'm giving you useful content. But if we were in a in a conversation to try and make a sale, right? You would judge based on the quality of questions you ask, right? That's usually kind of what people determine about you. Yes. And if you're not a- asking questions that are interrogative and informative, like insightful, you're not. It, you know, you're, you're 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 basically trying to convince at that point. Convincing it isn't convincing. I'm not convincing at all, right? Um. Anyway, I hope that made sense. Makes but, a uh, lot of sense. Answer questions. It a hundred percent answered the question. Now I'm going to take a page from your book and say, um, how can we parlay that information that you just shared yeah. into, uh, maybe a little bit of a, give me a little short summary breakdown of what you're doing today. We're recording this in, in kind of in the middle entry summer of 2023. What is Carlos Rosario doing with, with respect to all of that to help businesses with, uh, you had mentioned you're doing a lot of pre-sale um, activities, yeah. right? So what does that look like for you? And, and, uh, let's say I'm a business owner. Um, how do I know if you're the guy for me or not? Like, could you, you know, who, who are you helping and what, what kind of person out there should be really thinking about Carlos Rosario? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, basically you should be a business owner that has, hopefully you're bigger than me. Like I'm, I feel like I'm a shrimp helping whales, right? This, there will always be that need. Like they're both codependent on each other. They're symbiotic. A lot of people think you got to grow big. That's not necessarily the case. Uh, the bigger you are, the more efficiency matters to you, right? So if you're a big company that's in the, you know, hopefully you're, you're offering something that's already proven. You know, it's it's it, it. Obviously, you should have a few offers. More than not, I usually work with other. Uh, I don't know if course creators are going to be the only type, but creator types. If you're okay. a creative of some sort, you offer some sort of like transformative, non-external thing. Uh, okay, I'll probably, you know, we, we could probably do something. You know, uh, if it deals with like personal transformation of somebody, you know, and and all the niches, it works just fine. Personal development, um, health, and you know, like uh, money, money related stuff. Yeah. Uh, but I have worked with the likes of like I usually work with the. Uh, um, like Andy's flipped his house. You, you familiar with those guys? Uh, um, one, one of the vaguely, yes. They had the show on A and E where they buy houses, they flip them, and then they turn that into like, you know, like they, how to how to how to do that? They, sure. You know, so they had an online version of that. Yep. They wanted me to to help them launch that. So uh, I have worked with people that have clout and size, and you know what I mean, like things like that. Um, but basically, if you have some resources for me to work with, if you have a uh, an audience of some sort and offers that are that are working, uh, I can probably help you. Yes. Or if you if you are looking for if you have holes in whatever it is that you're doing, and I can see clearly that it's a zero to one. When I say zero to one, if I can go from you not having it to putting it in place, I don't mind working on that capacity as well, as long as you can afford working with with me. Um, did that answer your question? Yes. Or I'm not sure if so, that was clear. But would you say, yeah. though, would you say, Carlos, that that's you, what you're primarily focusing on right now is someone yeah. that you can do exactly what you just described? Is that is that the end of, of the scope of what you're doing? Or can you go even a little bit beyond that? Um, or are you pretty narrow focused on that right now? I, I'm trying to narrow my focus, actually, more more so than not, because I don't think it's narrow enough. Uh, as, But it's because I've learned that that's not because... The wider you are, the less people feel like it's for them specifically. Yeah. Because the more, the, the, the whole idea of being uh, the, the niche of you, when you position like this, right? It, it's like people find that, you know, like it, it, if, if they, you know, like for example, like for example, if all you need to do is help, like, one-legged midget to something like that, right? It doesn't get more specific than if you're a one-legged midget and you have this or that problem, I can help you, right? And the more specialized you are in positioning, you'll get everybody else around it. But the, the more that person feels like you're for them, that makes any sense. It makes Figuring a lot of sense. Figuring out what exactly those attributes are feels more personal. I'm not McDonald's, right? I always tell people that when they start, they're like, oh, so what do you charge, right? I'm like, I don't know. What, do you, what am I working with? You know, like... McDonald's is the big entity that serves billions. I serve 
one, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do things that are more catered to what you're doing. Yes. So I'm not looking for scalable things. I'm looking for impactful things. If that makes any sense. It does. It absolutely does. I got uh, just a couple of last questions for you before we wrap up. Um, the last, I guess you could say work related question that I have for you business related is what's your, what are your thoughts on everything that we've just discussed in light of all of the big AI changes? Uh, right now, we're living in a world uh, where everybody's going berserk with the chat GPT, right? I mean, it's just in a few years, I don't know how we're going to feel about it here in a few years. We might even, not even think it's that exciting already by that point. I don't know. But as of today, this stuff has blown our minds, right? I mean, it's a very new thing. It's very recent. Some people love it. Some people are very fearful of it. What are your thoughts on on what a business owner needs to be doing in light of that? Should they be scared? Should they be fearful? Should they be embracing it? And to what extent and what capacity? Uh, it's more of a preferential thing, for sure. But I, you know, I have people, I have friends or people that I respect that I, that I feel close to that um, they don't, they don't like it. Uh, I see it dumbing down society even further. But like anything, you know, like it, it's all a matter of a, a person, right? It's all a matter of, of who, who you are. You know, like I, I, every once in a while, I'll go like during the summer. The the Amish flea market op- opens up in in, in Pennsylvania. I've no, I don't know if you have ever been to one of those, mm. but they're horse and buggy people, right? Like they're that they're all that's a different. That's like going for like back in time, dude. Sure, yeah, <laughs> they're like, absolutely. They're living in like a, their own their own reality, but I love it. I, you know, I, I go just to kind of go. Uh, but the point that I'm trying to make is they've chosen that life because they want to. They they uh, what I what I've learned is that they want to they want to they they foster community right that that's their whole thing we build together we interact together they, they foster this kind of the human closeness bonding thing right uh with our respect right and i don't think AI, like every time some new technology comes out people are afraid that it's you know, or that they, they they suppose it's going to make things easier it doesn't make anything easier i don't think social media makes anything more social if anything it makes, makes us more isolated right because people don't know how to people they don't want to talk to people um it's a tool. To me, it's just a tool. Yeah. Right? It's like being afraid of like a Roomba or something like that. Yep. Um, the thing, I, I think AI, I, I feel like you should strive to be more valuable than any artificial intelligence tool. Uh, it, that tool is made for efficiency in my suspicion. Um, but I am definitely of the opinion that I'm made more valuable with AI, right? Yeah, because it's a, it's kind of a cheat code. You know what I mean? I can spit out content really fast. It's really great for ideation, but the it doesn't what it doesn't do what it does not do. It doesn't make these quantum leap thoughts of like this. It, it doesn't do why questions very well. It does right. not make spontaneous connections. So we we that's where my value I think comes in. Like I'm, that's what makes me good at strategy. Yes. Makes any sense. Yes. I, so I you're, it. you're almost seeing it as it's almost kind of a steroid for you in a sense, right? It's like you inject yourself, yeah. make yourself even even stronger, um, or amplify your yeah. skills that you already have even further, right? Yeah. Um, it's certainly not gonna gonna bankrupt you. It's certainly not gonna unemploy you. Um, and I think to your point, you're saying we should we should certainly proceed with caution with it. Um, and we certainly need to be aware of a lot of multitude of different angles where it could corrupt us or it could cause you know further deterioration of yeah. of certain things right but at the same token um if we do it right it can really elevate a lot of us that or, you know maybe even put some people on the map that um may not have had the opportunity or maybe just would have struggled more or what have you and then they're embracing this um and they're figuring out ways to to monetize it and, and help everybody around them yeah yeah i because I, I you know what i think what i suspect is people people still everybody wants to push buttons they want to push the easy button. That's not quite it, but it's damn sure getting closer to that feeling. You know, you still have to add the nuance and the experience. Our, it doesn't have any experience, right? You know, we still have to. You know, one of the things that makes us so powerful. One of the one of the core things that you know, like throughout history, that you know, I simply can't do is that we imagine stuff. We create stories. AI is not really, it, it creates really flat stories. Correct. We create detailed stories based on what we remember and how it mattered to us. You know, uh, that's, that's where the deep viral thing comes from. And this is where kind of like one of our duties, when it came to that giver taker thing that I talked about earlier, yeah, yeah. my job now, the way I look at it as 
as I pass through life, my job is to pass the baton back, hopefully in a useful way. So it's to add to the tapestry what comes after me. Hopefully I add something useful to the world. You know, that's what I'm trying to do. But uh, while while enjoying it at the same time, while I'm not being consumed by it, while I'm not yes. suffering, I guess, you know. That's it. I love it. I absolutely love it, bro. Carlos Rosario, man, you've got a lot to share. You've got a lot of wisdom in that noggin of yours, man. Cause, uh, like I said, you're like a walking uh, business encyclopedia as far as I'm concerned. Um, <laughs> tons of great information, walkie, walkie, cookie. <laughs> <laughs> right? Tons of great information, but I do want to leave I'm off glad. on, on a lighter note. Uh, what does Carlos Rosario do when he's not working? What are, what are your hobbies and, and who do you like to spend your non-business time with? Oh, my lady, man. My, my woman is my world, man. I love her so much. She's a, she's a good, she's, yeah. You find yourself that, a winner? <laughs> yeah, man. I, I, I'm, I'm lucky as hell that she's the best. She's the best, man. And I always look at it, you know, uh, me and her are always taking trips here or there. We, we go to the park a bunch, we go to the beach, we'll go biking, stuff together like that all the time. Yeah. Um, um, other than that, you know, just as long as the people I care about are 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 healthy and happy, you know, I I, I did you know get together and stuff. I, you know, I'm a just, I'm I'm a, I'm a down to earth type dude, man. I'm always just looking for um good company, good laugh, you know, a good good uh good conversation. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. Do you do you yeah. consider yourself more introverted or extroverted? I think as I've gotten older, I've, I've become a little bit more introverted, uh, but it's only because of the what I find is. It's one of those, it's, it's the, it's the paradox of like ignorance is bliss type thing. Have you heard that? Of course. Before? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think the more that you learn, the more you tend to realize people are simply just existing that, you know, in, in my opinion, yes. like people are just, you know, there's some people I do not resonate with, you know, they realize, you know, cause you are the quality of who you surround yourself with, you know, it has a bearing on you. Yep. Um, so I don't, you know. And I've also come to realize that even some of these people that you think have it all together, there's a lot of status. Naval Rab Did you read Naval Ravikant's book? The Which Almanac one? of Naval Ravikant? No. The Almanac no. of Naval? Oh, re I'll read that. Be all right. Oh, there you go. That, that's another book. See, oh, we got, God, dude. We got that, three books out of this one little conversation. Because that, of you. That, that book might make your brain explode, dude. Like with the, the, the stuff that he drops, man. Tell me the uh, name of it one more time. You can get it. The Almanac of Naval Ravikant. Everybody that I've told that about, they're like, oh my God, dude, thank you so much. Um, it says wisdom after, it's, he it gives you, it's basically a book on all of his tweets, essentially. Okay. It sounds stupid. But he tried really hard. I, I, I try to model some of what my, if you see my post, I try to model hard, kind of, the, he tries to give a lot of dense, impactful wisdom that if you, you know, like, as you read it, at first it sounds right, it sounds stupid, and then you think about it, you're like, oh, holy shit, that's brilliant. And you know, it actually anyway, makes you sense. You think about it for just a little bit. It's yep. like, oh my God, that's brilliant. He's like, obviously, well, one that stuck with me was the reason why you're, uh, what do you say? The reason why you're, you're bad at sales is because you're bad at product. The reason why you're bad at marketing is because you're bad at sales. Dang, he kept backing up this this stuff like as he said that you're like holy shit he's right so basically the yeah. bottom line is start with quality right you know you don't have to sell to the masses sell the one to sell like you have to make something that's worthy that's worth anything yeah right? for sure um and, and if you just look at the rest of his stuff you'll see what i you'll see what i mean he did a he did a good podcast that recaptures a lot of the essence of what he was talking about with uh joe rogan okay um which I recommend listening to, but it's, it's probably like three hours long, but it's way worth the listen, man. Uh, it's it's dense. It's really good. It's really really and, full and of wisdom, dude. I I have a little sidestep question, and and I'm 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 just doing this for selfish reasons. But when do you when do you kind of what does it look like your process for consuming content? Like, are you mostly an audiobook guy? Do you do you do the physical book? Is it a hybrid? And then like, when do you do it? Are you just a, like a sit down and, and close your eyes or sit on the couch and read or like, how, how do you go about consuming all this content? Every morning I'll wake up, uh, and about five o'clock and I'll just fire up the Bustello coffee bed. And then I just sit down and read for, I set, I read for at least an hour, uh, but I read and I write, I write as I, as I read, I write. 
um, comes and you're reading, out. You're you reading know, a physical book. This is not an audio book. No, this is no, this is yet yet. This is this is my this is oh, my baby Kindle right here. type thing. Mangle that is with. Got yeah. you. Yes. Uh, but I have you know physical books for all to work. But why think about Kindle? It's just portable, man. You know, you you just convenient it everywhere and anywhere. Yes. But with that being said, I also if I really like the book, I'll buy the audio book because uh, it reinforces my 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 my. my it re, it's reinforcement, and I'm a I'm a podcast or dude when it comes to driving. Like if I take a road trip, I'm I'm always firing up, um, you know, some kind of podcast. Okay, uh, give, give, book, me, give me at least like one of those. Give me at least one one podcast that you're that you're listening to consistently, um, and it's something that maybe not everybody and their mother already knows about, like a Joe Rogan. Oh yeah, I'll give him a plug because I, I hope to be on his show sometime too. I love the dude. His name is Josh Spector. Josh Spector. Okay. Josh. Oh my God, dude. Yeah, he's he's just a giver. He just gives everything he tried to give is from. The heart and the truck, it's all useful. Like, he does, like, he gives stuff away that should be paid for. <laughs> like, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, for sure. Like, I don't know any, like, yeah. And, and what's he talking is, about, Carlos? What's his, what's his primarily subject matter? It, okay. His newsletter. Yeah. The newsletter, too, right? It's called For the Interested. Okay. And that's it. Like, he even talks about how he should make it. Or targeted, but and it's a one sentence newsletter. Every day it's one sentence. That's all it is. One um, sentence newsletter. That's it. It's brilliant, man. Yeah. yeah. Jeez. And, man. and on Saturday, on Saturdays he gives uh he gives like five different bullet points. And his the the what the I'm sorry to bore you, man. No, and, man. It has nothing <laughs> to do with you. Nothing to do with you whatsoever. Um, it has to do with me not getting enough sleep last night. <laughs> that's an important that's an important that's an important discussion it's right there right completely Sleep important the magic that that that's a secret that that's a hack right there man absolutely is the, is the magic i know the good news is carlos um, i normally do it was just there you know, last night was just one of those little uh off nights normally though i'm all about that i'm all about that yeah Sleep sleep is definitely one of those hacks uh it is man i don't i don't, I don't ever hear talk anybody talk about this a, a lot but there's a lot of good free stuff on YouTube, man. Like YouTube is an endless source of holy smoke. Endless, good stuff endless. On there. Couldn't agree more. Um, Couldn't agree more. How is it that it, there's so much good content out there available at our fingertips, but yet so much? How do I say this? I, I've never seen so many people. Seem seems to so be unhappy, kind of wandering, or, yeah. kind of wandering around aimlessly in a sense, you know, or. or or just thirsty for more knowledge when it's right there. That's what I don't fully understand. Because because the currency today really is attention. Attention is the thing. We have to figure out how to hook it because your Facebook experience, your YouTube experience, your Twitter experience, it's all different from mine. You could be sitting right next to each other, right? It's like a weird, like it, the, the thing knows that the, you know, the algorithm knows what the hell you're up to. Right? It knows what you prefer, right? That's what it's optimized for. That's where it, that's where it's got us, man. Yep. but there's so much of it, man. Like it's just you know they, they got us hooked. The, the notification comes. We want to know what, what is it, right? It's the little crack hit, you know. That's right. And I'm honestly, I'm I am trying to detach from that. Honestly, I was like I use again, like I use Facebook as a curation tool. I sell some things on it, but most of the time I'm, I'm reaching out to folks or trying to create content that is attractive and attracting folks to me. Um, so basically, the it's learning to decouple from from that crack hit, but uh, but unfortunately, we do live kind of like it, it's the matrix, man. It's the real matrix, in my opinion, right? It's it's a different experience. What do you you want to hit something eerie? I posted this, and I then thought I saw like two other people post something similar. Please, you know how I know we're in the matrix, man. You seen the matrix? Have you seen the movie? The movie, the matrix. You know what, Carlos? I hate to say this, but I never actually watched the whole thing. I absolutely okay, saw a okay, few clips, and I, and I understand the general concept of the red pill, blue pill. Oh, well, okay, okay, but that's just as long as you're familiar with it. Yep. But he, he, check this out. A lot of people don't know this. When the movie was first created, the first three of those, the producers of the movie were the, the Wachowski brothers. Okay. They are now the Wachowski sisters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? you can. Reality is bending today. Now we can just make whatever reality we want, man. It's it's kind of the, you know, is that yeah, a good it, thing or a bad thing, Carlos? 
it depends on who you're talking to, right? Depends on who you ask, right? Like, I that's where I'm like, I I tend to not like I, I, I respect everybody's sovereignty, the individuality, whatever it is you want, as long as what was what somebody's saying, right? Your you know your freedom ends where my nose is. What your 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 fist freedom ends where my nose is, or whatever, something like that, right? So I get it. Basically, as long as it doesn't mess with me, I don't give a shit what you do. You can identify with whatever. Uh, I, I'm more judging like the quality of of your character and kind of how you interact with the world. You know, but sure, sure. Reality really is kind of like just to you know whatever you want of it. If that's not enough. We, we not only are in the Matrix, but if you're not familiar with CRISPR, have you heard of CRISPR? No. You heard of Designer Baby? What is it? Designer Babies? No, I don't think so. Oh, all right, all right cool. So basically... Should I look this up, Carlos? You've already... Probably, man. I don't know. You tell me. We, we, we went... So, so we went from trying to just survive in the world where we worship sun gods and the sky gods and all of these things. Yeah. And then we learned, you know, hunting was what we did initially. Then yep. we learned to, then we learned to build civilization. We learned to farm and we learned to build civilization. We built big towers and whatever. Yep. Now, dude, it was only in 1963, I think it was. Okay. We, now we're going to outer space, man. We're taking space travel trips. Yeah. We've yeah. been to the moon. Right. We're nuts. And now, what we have the ability to do with CRISPR, uh, I forget what it is. There's a book just written about it. I just bought it. Uh, Walter Isaacson is the author, but it, it, it basically is the woman who figured out how to gene edit. He edits your genes. Okay. Edit. So now, and they just uh, cured a fully grown person with sickle cell anemia, an incurable disease. They cured it in a, in a full grown woman. Wow. Right? The designer babies in China, this guy took it and he uh he made babies that can't get AIDS. Wow. They're immune to AIDS. Yeah. Um I don't know I don't know whether to celebrate not, or to run run away scared. I don't know, man. It's it's <laughs> not it's a scary it's a scary time now. So yeah. so but what when they, what they're doing with this stuff though is now, you know, the, the the controversy is why would we watch the Olympics if everybody's like, oh you know, like you can roid out people genetically genetic mutants right right uh, if you're black and you want to have blonde hair you can like for real blue eyes you know what I mean? or like first thing you're like we're gonna like we're just making ourselves up we're just doing whatever the hell we want now man yeah the re- reality is what it's like it's just this crazy i'm sorry i i know i, I got it on the, before the hot train man but <laughs> but yeah <laughs> again i appreciate everything you share carlos <laughs> it's all it's all very interesting <laughs> man and you are a um absolute wealth of knowledge um I guess we'll go ahead and, and kind of start wrapping things up, Carlos. But again, uh, everything you shared today, man, I mean, I, I already got all kinds. Of, I got a bunch of stuff that I got to go look up after this, uh, <laughs> after we're done here. <laughs> I hope it was worth it for you, man. It was 100% it was worth it, dude. It was 100% worth it. And right again, on. it's always, always an absolute pleasure, pleasure talking with you. And again, I'm always super thankful um, for all the things that you share, both online, offline podcast youtube wherever you're at um right on wherever man. you're at in this crazy world that we're living in man uh i one thing's for certain i can always rely on carlos rosario to share some quality content right. so <laughs> so I try, man. Thank, thank you I thank try, you again very much absolutely thanks for taking yeah, time yeah, out of your schedule yeah, yeah. To, to come with me on uh joining me here on this podcast today carlos absolutely thank you for having me thank you for entertaining my my all of my stories, man. And <laughs> if, if anybody wants to get in touch with me, you can find me at, uh, on Facebook at Carlos Rosario, or I was okay to drop this stuff. There. No, I was just, uh, that was my next I'm, question. How do we reach you? Oh yeah. Facebook is fine. I'm usually on that thing. Twitter. I'm actually recently more, more engaged on that. It's a little bit more of a ninja place to connect. The reason why I like Twitter, by the way, if you're not using it, I suggest you start messing around, at least checking it out. Why? Because we had an entire country. The president ran the damn thing from, from it. And yes. we got, you know, couldn't legit be like the world's first Martian owns the damn thing, right? So right, right. why not? Why didn't he buy it? So it's something to consider, right? Yes. Um, and there's a lot of good, good stuff on there that's that's a lot of people don't realize. Like it's instantaneous, and um, some good, some holy smoke scenes. Some good stuff is on there. Too. And it's a, a lot, lot of, more. Lot of good, it's a lot more free. There. The bird is free now, right? So there's, yeah. you know, yeah. that what you're getting on there is not so restricted and not so. Um, 
you know, bias, it's, it's really going to give you what you, it's going to serve up what you're really truly all about or what they know is interesting, I guess, huh? Yeah. The, the, that's the key though, with, it, with this social, you got to curate it. You got to train it for what you want to see. Cause a lot of people, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll smash the, the hate button or they you know, like if the you dislike. engage with anything, yeah, yeah. You know, if you can engage with anything, you're telling it what you engage with. Right. It's, it's meant to hit your button. That comes with a button pusher in reverse, you know? So if you don't like something, keep it moving. Like, get, don't show me more of that. Don't even mind. Don't engage with it, right? Yeah. Curate what you want to see in your feed, in your life. That's absolutely. That's nice right? And Carlos is, uh, <laughs> Carlos's Facebook group is called the Parlay Society, right? Right. Yep. yep. Um, I've been a member yep. of that for some time now, and that's kind of seems to be one of your central hubs um, that you yep. utilize for sharing information. So if you're listening to this, um, and you've got any interest in growing your business, I highly recommend checking out Carlos's, uh, parlay society. He's been running it for a while and he's always dropping gems in there all the time, all the time. I try, man. I try. So yeah, I just want to be useful. Very useful. Carlos. Right Thank on, you man. again. Thank you again, my brother. I really appreciate you. And, uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Thank the honor is all mine. Thanks for having me, man. Absolutely. And that does it folks for another episode of business innovators radio podcast. We'll catch you here next time. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.